Welcome to KinderSwift, Episode 2. For our first application, we will make an application that toggles messages at the press of a button. Open Xcode and you will find the Welcome to Xcode window. On the left side of the screen, you will see three choices. One for the playground, which we will use in our next lesson. An Xcode project and an existing project. Click the Xcode project. You will get a window asking you for a template. Click iOS, then Application. Select Single View Application. Click Next. You'll get another screen asking you a set of questions. For the product name, type KinderSwift1 Hello Pizza. The next two questions set up something for selling the app called a Bundle Identifier. Since we're not going to do that, we can put in simple answers at this point since it's still required to fill out. For the organization, put your name, and for the organization identifier, put either your website in backwards order, like it has here, or com dot and your name. Click the language button and make sure you are set to Swift. At this point we're going to program for iPhone only. Click Devices and select iPhone. Make sure Use Core Data remains unchecked. Click Next. Xcode will ask you where to save your files. It's best to make a directory for yourself. I made one called KinderSwift. Select that directory and press Create. Xcode will create your files and the target settings. Don't worry about what is here now, we'll get to it later. What is important is the left sidebar called the Project Navigator. This is the list of files that make up our project, sometimes referred to as the Project Bundle. Clicking on a file will bring up that file in the Center Editor pane. Click the main Storyboard file. You will get a screen like this called the Storyboard. On the lower right corner you will find the Object Library. The Object Library contains objects we can add to the Storyboard. Scroll down through the object library until you find the button and the label. If you click on either one of them, a popover shows tells you more about the control. Click and drag the label from the object library onto the box in the storyboard like this. Line it up with the upper left grid lines that appear. Release the button. You'll notice little handles around the label. Click the left center one and drag it to the other end of the box, which we'll call a view. You'll see the attributes of Spectre on the right and there's a box for text and for font size. Change the text from label to hello world and change the font to 30. You will notice the label doesn't fit the box anymore. Click the lower middle handle and drag down till you can see the whole thing. Now do the same for a button. Drag out a button, size it, and change the text to be pizza. Set the font to 30. Now go over to the attribute inspector, set the title color to white. Scroll down a little in the attribute inspector and set the background color to blue or some color you like. Now click the Assistant Editor. Here in Yosemite it looks like this. The Over Mavericks version is a tuxedo. Another pane comes up. In the bar at the top, click and make sure you are in automatic mode. Click on the label to highlight it. Hold down Control and drag from the label to the code to this point. Release the mouse button and you will get a popover asking you for information. On the top it says Outlet. Type in the name, My Label, and click Connect. Control drag from the button, but be careful this time. Control drag and release the button like before. This time change the outlet to an action in the popover. We'll name it My Button. Make the type a UI button. If you make a mistake in that step, let me show you what to do to correct yourself. Right click the button, and you'll see a box with connections show up. Hit the X in the connection. Only now can you delete the connected code. If you don't do this in this order, you may get an error you can never get rid of. Once done, try again. Hit the single pane mode button and select the viewcontroller.swift file. Notice the braces. We need to put our code between these braces. Give yourself a little space by pressing return. OK, now let's add some code. I'm just going to paste this into the code. If you want to type it in, pause the video and type it in. I've also included a copy in the notes for the video you can cut and paste. If you get any red circles showing up, then you type something wrong. Check to make sure you got it exactly right. Capitalization counts here. If you are typing this in by hand to get the pizza, hit Control Command Space to get the emoji pop-up. We're done. Build and run the application by hitting the play button at the upper left. Xcode will build the application. Now tap the button for pizza and you get a working app. Tap it again and again. 
I hope that whetted your appetite for more app development. Next lesson, we'll start the process of learning the basics of programming using the Xcode Playground.